Oh, there's some other things we could talk about there. Uh, there's something that I wanted to talk about in the blog post mm. that I didn't have room or time for. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been some interesting bugs due to the way WAN is implemented. So Wayland, when a screen or sorry, when a window is obscured, mm -hmm. it lowers the, the rate at which it can submit frames. So when your Factorio is full screen on your monitor, uh, it's 60 frames a second, no problem. But as soon as you switch to another Sway workspace, it throttles it to 20 frames a second. And that's only that because SDL implemented a workaround to make that work. Uh, hmm. Otherwise, it would throttle it like, I don't know how low it goes, like one a second, but it just, it, it's for power consumption reasons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and obviously in our game, our game is single, th well, it's not single threaded, but the main update loop has to wait for the runner to finish before it can keep processing the rest of the game. So that's caused problems. If you're on a multiplayer server and you switch away from the game, you'll get dropped mm -hmm. because you start falling behind. It's really annoying. Fortunately, there is a fix in the works for that, but it's taking several years. And yeah, it's been, it's been quite a journey to wait for that fix. I didn't realize that happened. Uh, is that... Wait. Yeah, yeah it's... I... Because uh... I... I, the, I the... Let me just think about what I'm trying to say. Because um, when I, I have OBS open, I guess I would have always had it on a secondary screen, but it would still be visible. Huh. I know that KDE does that. I didn't know Sway did that as well. Yeah, it's a fundamental Wayland thing. Isn't Any it? Wayland compositor will throttle windows that you can't see. I don't, I don't know how some get around it. I, yeah, think I they don't use remember Hyperlink like... doing that, but maybe I'm misremembering. I think OBS has a separate render thread, so I think that doesn't affect them. Well, but... I also would have someone have like a game that I tab out of and it, I move to a different um, workspace. I don't remember Hyperlink doing that, but maybe I, I, I could be misremembering. I'll have to test Hyperland. Maybe they worked around it. But mm. like I said, there are some works or fixes in the works. Uh, the SDL is going to get an event that will let us, that'll notify us when the window is no longer visible. So I can just stop rendering altogether, mm. uh, which will be a much more efficient. But that's not there yet. So right now, if you run Factorio on Wayland, just don't don't hide it because then you'll get dropped. <laughs> huh. That's really annoying. And uh, it is very annoying. Is that the only platform that has that issue? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we can. There's, there's, uh, there's a, another example we can go to and in, into as well. Uh, something that only happens on Wayland. Wayland has a fixed input buffer for every client, mm -hmm. and when the buffer overflows, the client gets killed. So when Factorio is frozen and you move your mouse too much, the game closes. <laughs> and Factorio freezes quite a bit, especially if. You place a gigantic blueprint, the game freezes while it processes that mm. because it's a single threaded mostly game. Uh, and so I, if I'm running it on Wayland, I just have to not touch my mouse because otherwise the game will just turn off. That's really annoying. Yeah. Is there some and way it that only can happens work around? Wayland. Sorry, what? I was going to say, is, that, is there some way that can be worked around or is that just like a fundamental issue? Uh, it was a fundamental issue. Just like a month ago, they finally merged a change that will make the input buffer resize automatically on mm -hmm. the server side. Uh, I don't know if that'll fix it automatically for us because I haven't tested it yet, but I'm hoping that it will. <laughs> yeah, these are the these are the kinds of things. Uh, like I said, you have to keep ongoing platform support, especially with Wayland, because. Uh, there's a lot of issues that came up after I added the support that I never would have expected. <clears throat> well, I guess that is the one nice thing about supporting X11, because X11 is basically dead. At least that part of it doesn't really change. Yes, it's very stable. Yes, yeah, sta Debian's Nothing also changed. stable. <laughs> <laughs> Running three-year-old dependencies is quite stable. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you have a version of Xorb within the last 10 years, you're fine. <laughs> Oh, actually, I think you might be right. Pretty much all that's happened is, I, like, some bug fixes. I'm sure there's been at least a couple of minor, or maybe there's, maybe, actually, I guess variable refresh rate's probably been added in the last 10 years. That's probably the only oh, major really? feature I can think of. I didn't even know XORG supported that. That's cool. It does. It's jank. It doesn't work properly. Oh, of it, course. Um, 
I think it only works properly on a single monitor. I mean, I can't use it either because right now on Sway, even though it supports VRR theoretically, <laughs> if you move your mouse, it hops right back up to the max refresh rate. And it's been an open bug report for years and they just haven't fixed it because it's not a high priority. Huh. And I don't blame them. Like the thing to remember, especially with all the people who say, oh, Wayland's taken 10 plus years to come out. People are doing this, a lot of people are doing this on their own free time. Yep, yep. So you can only expect so much. Yeah. That being said, when there are people who are actively doing things that make things worse, um, there are issues there. Uh, yes. Obviously, the thing I... The, the first thing I want to bring up is the one that you've talked about is the client-side and server-side decoration thing. My issue with that is they agree... Uh, did they agree to the spec? I th or am I thinking of DRM leasing? They definitely didn't oppose the spec initially. Um, and there were patch sets to get server-side decorations implemented in GNOME. And it's just... Okay, for any, I, I've explained this a million times before. For anyone who hasn't heard my rant before, so client-side decorations are when the application window is responsible for drawing the decorations of the window. So that being things like the header bar, where it has your close icon, full screen, things like that. You might have the title of the window. You might have an icon for the window, depending on the, uh, the desktop you're doing. Client-side decorations means that the application, every single application that wants to have... Those things there has to draw them itself. Whereas server-side decorations mean that the desktop is responsible for adding them. There are benefits to having server-side decorations because it allows you to integrate things into the header bar. If you look at a lot of GNOME applications, for example, they have their, um, their hamburger menu in the actual header bar. If you look at something like Steam, it has a custom header bar where it integrates nicely into the rest of the application. Spotify, they have a lot of their um, account settings in their header bar. It works. It's nice. And if developers want to have it, it's really nice to have as an option. But there are some cases where it just doesn't make sense to have to add them yourself. Good example is games. But another good example is, let's say you are doing a, um, a, a Python scientific nonsense, whatever, and you want to show some sort of graph, and that graph appears in a window, you are responsible for making sure the header bar of that window is drawn. You're just trying to show a graph on the screen. Like, that, that is not at all relevant to what you're doing. Exactly. And in our case, uh, when we initially came out with the Wayland support, the, one of the first bug reports that came in and said, hey, I'm on Wayland, I'm using GNOME. Uh, the game is not doesn't have a title bar. Please fix. And I was like, okay, well, maybe this is just some weird thing, or maybe we just need to update SDL, I don't know. But uh, then I looked into it, and yeah, GNOME does not render server-side decorations. If your client does not provide decorations, there are none. Mm -hmm. So I got fairly annoyed by this because I'm like, hey, we're a video game. On other platforms, regardless of the implementation details, I'm looking at you, Reddit. Um, mm -hmm. On other platforms, we don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. uh, we just submit our game's frame buffer and the, the, win the Windows libraries or the Cocoa libraries, they do everything for us. They have the title bar. Mm -hmm. uh, Gnome on Wayland is the only desktop environment and the only place in the world where we have to worry about this problem. And it was quite annoying because of that. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, the fix wasn't that difficult. We just had to bring in another dependency. Uh, but the dependency also doesn't work correctly because it doesn't follow the uh, GTK4 theme. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's been an adventure. I will say, though, before uh, I hand it back to Brody, is uh, I was very displeased with the amount of toxicity I saw on this, on Reddit especially, after I... Uh, posted this and it got spread around the news or spread around the internet. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of people who were borderline personally attacking the GNOME devs and that's never okay. I have problems with GNOME. I don't have problems with the people. Mm -hmm. Everyone is a person. They're doing what they think is best. So please don't attack them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think if people take that, like if they take it way too far, right? You know, it's, yeah. I like to be very critical of what the GNOME devs are doing, right? I, I think that the way they're handling this is actively 
detrimental to not just their desktop, but uh, like application developers who are trying to support Wayland. But that does not mean you should go out of your way and like send them DMs and like, you know, rant about like just just be a normal person. Like how difficult is it to just be a normal person on social media? And it's fine to be critical of it and bring this up as an issue and that's that's like fine. But as the second you're going to be doing personal attacks, you've crossed a line. Just stop doing that. Yeah. And uh, I might have, I don't know, the, the tone that I took in the blog post was fairly harsh. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I even said in their infinite wisdom, as you pointed out, uh, <laughs> I might have gotten that from you, actually. I'm not sure, though. <laughs> but yeah, it's never OK to victim or not victimize. It's never OK to take things too far. Yeah. So please be nice. Um, that being said, I do wish that GNOME would see the lights. And even though it's not technically required by the whatever protocol or, or specification is, please do server-side decorations, GNOME, because you are the most popular desktop environment. And every barrier there is to native Linux support for games, especially, is another barrier to people not making native Linux applications. Mm -hmm. We have to come together and try to make things as simple as possible. And that's not to say we should copy every bad design decision from Windows, but we have to make it as seamless as possible. Mm -hmm. And this is just, even though in this specific circumstance, it's not that big of a deal to fix, it's just one more thing. Yeah. I don't know what the deal is with LibDecor not using the um, GTK theme correctly. That seems like an issue on their side. Yeah. The thing with LibDecor is like, even though it's just one dependency, it also has its own dependencies. And uh, with SDL, we don't have to link against LibDecor because SDL links it at runtime. Mm -hmm. uh, but for simpler applications, if you want to just draw a graph and uh, you just want to submit your OpenGL frame buffer with your graph, but then instead you have to bring in LibDecor and Lib and Pango Cairo and all these other things to draw the title bar. And it's just, it adds a lot of complexity. It shifts the burden of that complexity from the desktop environment to the clients. Yeah. Where it gets also really weird, like you're using, I assume that Factorio uses a relatively modern version of SDL? Yes, uh, our 1.1 version is a few versions outdated now, but mm -hmm. our master branch, our 2.0 version, is on the latest version. Mm -hmm. So I know someone who is developing a game in a older LTS of Unity, and that version doesn't yet have proper Wayland support developed. I think the modern version, yeah, the, the newest version of Unity, I think they have experimental Wayland support. But on this older version... If he wants to have window decorations, he's going to have to develop that outside of the engine, which is not a pleasant experience to do with Unity. Like, it really does not want you to break out of that environment. Right. And that is a... Uh, the bur Shifting the burden of maintenance on the clients is not just isolated to this incident. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another problem. Well, the, the problem with the input buffer overflowing that I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier... The initial response I saw from Wayland developers is, why isn't your input on a separate thread? That's the client's fault. Mm -hmm. And that is just, it makes, it doesn't make me angry. It just makes me frustrated because if you want Wayland to be widely used, you have to be flexible enough to allow all of the non-conforming clients to work and to some degree. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you don't want to be like, oh, we need to support X11 natively. I mean, X Wayland is amazing, but and I'm grateful that they did that. But things like, oh, why isn't your input on a separate thread? We can't do that because SDL doesn't support that. We would have to switch to a different low-level library, and that would be a year-plus worth of work. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's just not feasible. And that attitude, while I'm, I get that they're trying to avoid the pitfalls of X11, where X11 got so bad because they were doing what was beneficial for them at the time and they didn't really think about the future very much. Mm -hmm. That's how we got there to where we are today. Wayland's taking that opposite approach, but they sometimes take it too far by assuming that clients are going to be well-behaved. And uh, it took a long time for them to finally come around to uh, resizing that input buffer because they're like, oh, why aren't the clients behaving? 